Okay, uh, let's start the uh, lecture 11. Uh, today, the hidden Markov model, uh, part three. This is the last part of the hidden Markov model. And before moving to that, I have several kinds of uh, announcement. First, uh, there are several actually requests about the video. And I was actually trying to make uh, the, the uh, situation better as, uh, as much as possible. And the I post a non-edited version in a day or so. Uh, uh, and the in that piazza. So if someone wants to access the video as soon as possible, uh, please check it. So which I guess uh, satisfies some of people's request. However, please note that uh, this one should not be distributed. Okay. So this kind of video has uh, uh, in the, uh, the, the information about yours. So uh, the, we have to remove this kind of information uh, to make it to be uh, the, uh, available. So that's why I kind of spend a lot of time for uh, editing and so on, removing the, some of the information for, for you guys. And then the, the later, uh, the, uh, I edited the uh, version. Uh, I will also post it to the uh, official version in the Piazza and we will also be uh, the uploaded to the YouTube. So that is our kind of policy of the video. Uh, before that, uh, the, I was actually only doing the second item, but the, the, given the several requests, I will do the uh, first one. But uh, the police, again, understand uh, that it should not be downloaded or distributed just kind of checking this in a streaming manner okay for your own purpose personal use okay so uh let's uh the, the move to the uh today's uh, agenda so today uh we will actually extend the hidden markov model formulation and algorithm in the gaussian mixture model version and also uh, discuss about the last algorithm, uh, last important algorithm uh, in the HMM, which is the BitAB algorithm. And then as a side product, I will also explain about the BitAB training, which is alternative way to the uh, the, uh, the bar merge uh, the training algorithm. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move to the uh, actual contents. So we are still in the acoustic model part. And the, the, we are still kind of try to add a model, this acoustic model based on the statistical method. And the uh, previous two lectures, I mainly focus on the hidden Markov model with a single Gaussian model. Like this. This is for the simplicity. But the, the, from today, I will uh, explain, explain about the, the Gaussian mixture model extension of hidden Markov model like this. And this is actually quite widely used acoustic model uh, in a hidden Markov model. And also one comment is that this Gaussian mixture model is almost replaced with the deep neural network nowadays. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start the, the uh, formulation of the Gaussian mixture uh, based hidden Markov model. And this uh, the formulation is actually exactly follow what we have done in the previous hidden Markov model, single Gaussian based approaches. Uh, we have a four step using uh, introducing a latent variable, uh, define a complete data likelihood, auxiliary function, a parameter estimation, and so on. And these four steps are exactly the same. Uh, the, and then the, the, each of the kind of realization of the step is slightly extended uh, depending on the Gaussian mixture model. So first talk about the introduction of the latent variable. So in the previous single Gaussian model cases, we only have a latent variable uh, uh, the obtained by the, the uh, hidden Markov model which is a HMM state. This is the information of the alignment that we have already discussed before, right? 
And then after we have this kind of a, a HMM state, we just using the Gaussian distribution. That was the previous formulation. However, as I mentioned before, a single Gaussian is not enough to capture the real data variations in speech. So people actually often use the uh, multiple Gaussians to fit this kind of problem. How to extend a single Gaussian to the Gaussian mixture model? We just combine Gaussian is a weighted sum. So this one is the Gaussian model, Gaussian distribution, and this one is weight. Okay. And the weight actually has a sum to one condition. So this distribution also satisfies the sum to one con uh, the condition. So the basically the extension is like this. Just using the, uh, the, uh, the weighted sum of the Gaussian. However, this actually introduces additional complexity of the model. For example, the discussion is how we kind of define this uh, multiple Gaussian. For example, uh, this is a kind of example uh, of the, uh, the, how we kind of model the data with the Gaussian. But the, there is actually uncertainty of which data is corresponding to the uh, which Gaussian. This is very similar to the alignment problem. And again, this is not observable. So we actually need to consider to handle this uncertainty uh, in the formulation. And this is actually exactly uh, the same uh, latent variable as the hidden Markov model, but there has some kind of a, a constant, different constraint. So anyway, uh, to uh, the consider this kind of assignment problem, similar to the hidden Markov model cases, we use the additional latent variable, which has the information of the alignment. For example, this BT means that, for example, this data one can be as aligned with this cluster K1 or K2 or K3 or K4. So by introducing this latent variable, similar to the hidden Markov model cases, we can also formulate the Gaussian mixture model. So uh, our problem is becomes our problem becomes actually a bit complicated now. So we have a uh, two types of the uh, the, the uh, latent variable. One comes from the uh, the HMM state alignment, and the other uh, comes from the uh, the Gaussian mixture model. But uh, basically, this is a similar uh, latent variable. So we can actually be using the same EM algorithm to provide a solution. Okay, so let's uh, the, uh, go more deeply about the, uh, how we kind of providing the, uh, this kind of uh, HMM state, uh, Gaussian mixture model. Generally, uh, we actually providing the K component Gaussian mixture for each state. So for example, if we have a three state HMM, each of the state have 10 Gaussian mixture, or uh, 10 Gaussians or 16 Gaussians, and usually uniform, just each of the state would have a 16 Gaussians. Uh, that is a kind of a formulation. So previously I defined the Gaussian mixture here, but if we incorporate it in a HMM state, we actually need to additionally consider the condition of the HMM state. And then the uh, uh, mixture uh, weight and the Gaussian parameters are uh, not only depending on the Gaussian mixture index, but also uh, depending on the HMM state. So this is a kind of extension uh, we are doing. 
for a Gaussian mixture are HMM state cases. So this is a kind of a basic definition uh, of the, uh, the, the Gaussian mixture model for hidden Markov model state. Given this formulation, uh, we will uh, go through the all the kind of uh, uh, other uh, the procedure uh, to formulate the EM algorithm. And basically, I will skip the detail about it because the procedure is quite similar. So first, uh, the, 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 after we get the kind of a, uh, introducing the latent variable, the second step is to make a complete data likelihood. And how to do it? This is a kind of a single Gaussian cases, which we already discussed in the previous section, uh, previous lecture, that is extended to just including the Gaussian mixture weight and the other uh, mean and the variance parameters are also depending on not only for the uh, HMM state, but also for the Gaussian mixture. So this is a kind of our, our uh, the extension. And this one is actually uh, the similarly uh, solved by the, uh, the, uh, the product rule, uh, conditional independence assumption and so on. And this part is again, almost same formulation in the single Gaussian mixture cases, except that we also consider the Gaussian mixture latent variable. So we have a Gaussian mixture latent variable here, Bt, and here. And the others are the same. So this change uh, that makes the kind of Gaussian distribution to be a little bit complicated. However, the procedure is exactly the same. So these are complete data likelihood, uh, the GMM extension version of the complete data likelihood. And basically the following part, I will explain about the, the just a kind of a difference uh, from the single Gaussian to Gaussian mixture model. And the, the formulation uh, are exactly the same. So next part is the auxiliary function. So remember that the, for the EM algorithm, we starting from uh, this posterior distribution and the, uh, the expected value of the, uh, the log, uh, the uh, joint probability or complete data likelihood. So this is a starting point of the auxiliary function. If we extend it to the Gaussian mixture model, as I mentioned, we only have an additional latent variable. And here we are, are, uh, define it as a B. So the uh, equation is just extended to consider the B uh, in the both uh, the posterior distribution and the uh, complete data likelihood. So this is a, a completely same procedure, but just having an additional latent variable B. By the way, this is actually, uh, uh, again, B is also sequence. So we actually need to handle the summation over the sequence. But uh, this can also be easily uh, the removed by using the same uh, trick of using the sequence decomposition, distributed property, and so on. And I only providing the, uh, the uh, solution of the mixture weight case, because the others are almost same, except that we have an additional uh, parameter B. But anyway, uh, this one, yeah, it looks more complicated, right? Because we have our additional summation over B. So this is, you know, makes you a little bit confused. However, uh, please later check the, uh, this uh, formulation and the others. Again, the, the, the methodology is basically the same, just kind of our, uh, the, the performing the sequence, uh, the composition of uh, the sequence uh, the S and the sequence B, and using the distributed property, 
to change the, uh, the summation, a uh, part of the summation, and then performing the sum rule, and then eliminate the sequence summation. And we actually can uh, the, get the this uh, distribution. And this is actually quite similar form to the, uh, the other uh, the, uh, uh, auxiliary function that we have shown in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, basically, uh, we need to consider the posterior distribution of uh, the, the, the J, ST equal J, and the BT equal K. And we have discussed that the meaning of the, this one, ST equal J given O theta, which is uh, that we use the gamma as a variable, right? Which is the probability of when we are in the some point of the polarities and consider the all possible uh, the state sequence and the, the uh, probability of we are at this point. And the, uh, the, the, the same not, uh, the, the methodology can be applied. Uh, just in addition to the, our point of us uh, the, in some polarities, we also have some kind of a, uh, the, the, the Gaussian mixture uh, specification. Basically, that's it. So by using this kind of uh, uh, the formulation, notation, uh, we can actually uh, rewrite all the auxiliary function uh, based on the extension of the gamma and the guzi. Or oh, guzi is actually not changed at all. But the gamma is changed, which depending on the which Gaussian mixture we are belonging to. But the other part is the almost uh, same. And we can define this gamma and the guzi uh, similar to the uh, previous formulation. And then we can solve uh, this, uh, the, we can compute this uh, posterior distribution by the forward and the backward algorithm. So again, the methodology is almost the same. And I would not uh, the, uh, go dive to the detail about the derivation anymore, because again, this is quite obvious. We have an additional variable, which makes it a little bit, little bit complicated, but the way to solve the equation is almost the same. And the forward algorithm is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, we can build the forward algorithm uh, almost exactly the same. Uh, except that we need to consider the Gaussian mixture con uh, computation here. But uh, the others are actually the same. First, we initialize the, uh, the, the forward probability for each uh, time step, uh, for first time step for each state. And then uh, the, from the second to uh, large T, we actually are uh, the accumulating the uh, the, this uh, likelihood to get to the forward probability and so on. And the computational cost is slightly increased. Uh, previously, we considered uh, J square T, but it becomes additional uh, the complexity comes from the mixture. So it's, uh, the, the complexity is a linearly increased uh, based on the Gaussian mixture. And the same for the backward algorithm. And I skipped the detail about it. And we can uh, make a forward backward algorithm uh, to compute the alpha, uh, beta, uh, and even likelihood. Uh, even we extend to the GMM and having additional latent variable, we basically can solve it similarly. And the parameter estimation is also similarly, we can solve it uh, by uh, using the, uh, the, uh, the getting the derivative of the, the each e-step function, which was the, uh, the weekly 
uh, assignment uh, in the last week, right? And uh, these are the uh, uh, calculation is almost same, but we just have an additional uh, the the uh, additional variable uh, the weight uh, mixture weight. Uh, that's it. And the uh, finally, if we made this kind of parameter estimation for the backward, backward algorithm and so on, we can actually also finish to make a boundary algorithm based on the HMM, GMM, uh, the uh, extension. And this is the, uh, the, the coding assignment too that you have to uh, implement. So this is a kind of a GMM extension part. Is there any question? Yes. So what if we treat the calculation as a or the Omegas are not tunable. So, I think I should have Yeah, so what if we treat the body mixture, uh, the weights of body mixture as a fixed value? What is body mixture? Oh, fixed means that the threshold of equal is this division. No, we're not uh, using EM to set EM and given to like figure out what is the best. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, okay, I still don't get your question, but the, the picture weight that we use are uh, the, the estimated and the list of the EM algorithm. Yeah, I mean, if we set it up and we do not optimize the base, what would you have? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, like, for example, we first initialize the mixture weight. Yeah. But we just don't uh, the, 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 the update yeah, yeah, yeah. this uh, the mixture weight. Uh, what would happen? Uh, this is uh, the my answer is that of course that the, it is slightly worse in terms of the fitting of the data. However, mixture weight conservation is actually not very large. The, the most important part of this kind of uh, the GML fitting or GML likelihood conservation come from the uh, the, uh, the mean, Gaussian mean, and the variance. So in this sense, uh, fixing the mixture weight is actually okay in the practical uh, the solution. Um, this is actually, uh, the maybe I will also explain about the other cases. Um, among this kind of a parameters, uh, the, just kind of try to uh, the recap. So we have an initial state. We have a state transition. We have a Gaussian mixture weight and the mean and the variance. Uh, each of them are actually updated based on the EM algorithm. However, practically, the most dominant parameter is actually mean. So it can be a very good debugging. If you guys have some issues in your kind of uh, the uh, EM algorithm, you guys may actually check whether your mean is accurately estimated or not. And the second, uh, the biggest contribution comes from the, uh, the variance parameters. But this is actually generally smaller than mean in terms of the, uh, the contribution to the performance. However, variance is actually very difficult to estimate because it is a second order statistics and it's often uh, the, 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 uh, overestimated. So uh, for example, uh, in many cases, uh, this uh, the variance uh, goes to uh, variance goes to infinity if we don't have our data, right? Yes, the variance is the, the... no, variance becomes, variance 
define the kind of our regions of the Gaussian, right? So uh, what is often happens is that uh, if the assignment of the data is very small for each Gaussian, uh, variance uh, becomes uh, very small. And then sometimes actually even it becomes the, uh, the, uh, the zero. And then the, the, it actually breaks the algorithm uh, because then the, the, uh, the, the likelihood becomes infinite. And this happens in the actual implementation. So uh, the, I would recommend you to actually check the variance value of your kind of uh, the, uh, estimation. And if this goes to zero, you will, for example, replace it to some kind of a small other uh, finite value. That is actually what we will use, often use as a technique. And the, then going back to your question, uh, the mixture weight and the state transition are actually not changing the reality so much. So, uh, the, for example, still mixture weight people are actually updating, but the state transition is actually not so much used in the real system uh, because it is not so uh, related to the, the final uh, the likelihood so much. Of course, in your uh, the, the, the coding assignments too, uh, the, I would like you guys to also estimate a state transition. But uh, I think you guys can also easily check that the contribution of a state transition and the mixture weight is very small. And even you guys don't upgrade it, uh, the performance would be enough, sufficient. Okay, uh, any other questions? What comments? Okay, cool. Uh, now I move to the beta B algorithm. This is the kind of last algorithm, last important algorithm in the hidden Markov model. So uh, the to uh, explain about the beta B algorithm, um, it may not be fully required. Beta B algorithm might not be fully required, but the the, for example, since we actually consider all possible state sequence, right? And the beta B algorithm is actually try to find the best state sequence in terms of the likelihood. But the, the, our kind of our, uh, the original formulation principle is that we don't kind of are uh, making a hard decision. We always try to make a soft decision. And the, the, the make a summation over the sequence. Yeah. That is our kind of principle of the formulation. However, we want to see, right, what kind of alignment is the most likely, right? Which is you know, good to providing the meaning, which is good to providing the debug, debugging ways of uh, the how actually HMM state sequence will behave. So, uh, this beta B algorithm is providing this kind of a way. Uh, we regarding HMM state sequence as a probability, and this is not observable, but this beta B algorithm can provide the most likely state sequence. Okay, so uh, let's consider more about the state sequence. So again, uh, the, we can usually write our all possible state sequence as a torus, right? And then they, they, what we want to check is that which path is the most likely. Again, this is a very good intuitive way than you know, consider entire all possible passes, right? And this is actually the problem of search. Among this kind of all possible state sequence, what is the kind of best path? Uh, this is actually exactly uh, solving the search problem, right? And I will discuss about several search algorithms. 
And to uh, the, the define this kind of search problem, I just pick up the kind of once, once uh, the path. Not sure this is you know, best or not, but I just kind of pick, picking up the one path. And then defining what is a search. Uh, in this kind of a problem, each arc has some score, right? Do you see that the two, three, or 10 uh, in this uh, the trace? Okay, yeah. So the search problem is actually usually providing this kind of a graph and some kind of a score, local score for each arc. And then in these cases, this path corresponding to the, uh, the having a total score of two plus two plus two plus three. So this is actually toy problem uh, to make it simple. Actually, this is a, a, the, the actual uh, problem is likelihood. So it's not this kind of simple number, but to make it simple, I just using this kind of number. So let's say this path has this kind of a total score, nine. By the way, uh, I am summing up each arc, right? However, our case is actually this probability is usually defined as a product. We can actually solve it as a, this as a product, but people usually using the summer. Why? We actually using the, uh, the log operation, log domain, and then taking this kind of a, a, a product to the log. So this summation, you can regarding it as a, uh, the multiplication in the probabilistic domain, which is converted to the summation uh, over the, uh, the uh, log domain, okay? And then uh, I will explain about three search algorithms here. So one other search algorithm is greedy search. So greedy search is to take the highest arc at every time step. For example, now we are here and the fitch path we should take. This one has high score, right? So we just move to here. And then next, we check the next two arcs, three and two. Oh, this three is here, uh, three is higher. So we just taking this higher path. And then uh, that goes to here and here. So the greedy algorithm, the, uh, in terms of greedy algorithm, we can select this path. And this is actually two plus three plus two plus three equals 10. It's higher than the previous uh, the, uh, path, right? This one is uh, the, the, the more likely to be uh, the, uh, the considered uh, as a kind of HMM state. And then I have a quiz, uh, please. Uh, Is that enough? Yes. So the question is the question is that we have a lot of passes, right? This grid is such among all of these possible uh, the passes. Is this the highest score pass or not? That is a question.
Okay, let's have 30 seconds more. Okay, close the poll. Okay, nice. Uh, everyone was correct. <laughs> the answer is no. It is obvious, right? You see that there possibly have some other very high probability passes. So this greedy search is not always leading to the highest uh, uh, the score pass. However, always, you know, this kind of technique has a pros and cons. Greedy search is easy, right? So in this sense, actually, this algorithm is also often used. The second search algorithm is beam search. This actually keeping the top K highest passes. So previously in the greedy search, we only consider the best path, right? Uh, best uh, the score path, and then eliminate all possible uh, the, the passes. But this actually uh, the do not include all possible uh, the highest passes. So instead of uh, the doing the greedy path, uh, people also using the beam search. For example, we in this example, we always try to consider two highest passes for each time stamp. So first from T2 to T3, uh, we have only two passes. So we keep this uh, two partial passes. And moving to the next time stamp. And then consider these two actually goes to three or two, right? And then the other uh, the score would be five and four. Or uh, these cases, the second one is actually score five and two uh, plus one. So it means that the six, three, five, and four. And then among them, these two uh, subsequence is highest probability, uh, second. Uh, uh, highest probability and the second highest probability. So we actually keeping the uh, second highest probability. And actually already this is different from the greedy pass, right? Greedy pass only consider these passes, but now we have actually additional pass here. And uh, moving to the additional step, and then finally reaching to that is at the uh, end, and then checking the best passes. The, uh, the beam search actually finding this path. One, five, two, three. So it goes to 11, right? And actually this is better than the uh, greedy search. And uh, actually beam search in general, theoretically, if K equal one, it goes to the, uh, the greedy search. And if K goes larger, it becomes more accurate. But since this is also approximation, for example, if, of course, if we have a you know, very good computation power, we can make K to be very large. But actually this is difficult. So we fix some a K to be like a, a two or five or something like that. In the previous cases, only k equal to, right? So this is an approximation. But if we have a larger k, this approximation becomes more accurate. So this is a kind of beam search. And then today, I will talk about the Bittard algorithm, Bittard search. And the Bittard search is actually 
are the providing the most likely state sequence, the most uh, the, 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 the high uh, the highest path uh, we can obtain uh, based on the uh, algorithm. Of course, one possible way is to consider all possible state sequence, right? Which would be uh, the, 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 uh, the goes to the, uh, the exponential. So this is kind of impossible. But the beta B algorithm actually can avoid uh, this exponential uh, combinations, but still we can get the optimal highest uh, likelihood state. And to do that, uh, beta B algorithm is actually defined to solve uh, this operation. The joint probability of observation and the state and the try to kind of get the, uh, the highest state among this other uh, joint probability. By the way, this one and this one is equivalent. And to do that, we actually uh, the, the introduced uh, uh, the function delta t. This is the, uh, the, the, uh, the state subsequence from one to t minus one, and then uh, the state sequence t uh, sorry, state uh, the st equals j. So this is the kind of uh, the, the beta b uh, delta function. This beta b delta function actually providing the information of each state. Uh, the, we actually also providing the, uh, the partial most likely state for each state. And then providing some kind of the probability uh, and so on. Uh, this is a beta function. And this uh, the, the probability is computed for each of the, uh, the arcs, uh, each of the nodes, by the way. So it can be also computed in here or here, here, everywhere we compute this one and then get the kind of state. Uh, the best state likelihood. I will explain more about the algorithm. But anyway, it's a little bit similar to the, uh, the uh, forward probability or backward probability, right? Each point, we compute some values. Okay, so let's formulate a uh, beta algorithm. It is similar to the forward or backward algorithm. It is also recursively solved. So to recursively solve means that we first uh, the, the consider the case of t equal one and then extend it to the other uh, solving the recursive equation. So first consider the t equal one cases and uh, define uh, this other uh, substituting t equal one case in this kind of definition. And then uh, if we using this kind of definition, we actually can write the equation as a joint probability of the observation, first observation, and the, uh, the, the first uh, the HMN state, uh, the, 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 the HMN state in the first frame. And this one is actually, uh, we don't need to uh, the consider the, uh, the summation over the sequence or latent variable, there's nothing. We can actually compute it other Gaussian mixture likelihood and the initial state. So this one, we can compute it. If we know the Gaussian uh, parameters and so on, which we you know, initialize or sol solving the EM algorithm and so on. So if we know the parameter, we can first get this kind of a compute this one. And then the problem is whether we can make a recursive equation. And the, I will basically skip this recursive one because it is also very similar to the, uh, the forward or backward algorithm. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the, uh, the way to solve this kind of recursive equation is same. We first rewrite this kind of uh, observation as a decomposed form. And then we using the product rule to factorize each of the distribution. And we using the conditional independence assumption. Again, if you are not sure, you can just make a you know a graph of the HMM and then safely removing some of the condition. And then finally, this is a Gaussian mixture case. 
So actually, we also need to uh, consider to uh, provide the, uh, the Gaussian mixture cases based on the sample rule. But basically, that's it. So by doing that, we actually can find the, uh, this uh, the distribution and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, other parameters are basically uh, best, uh, computed by using the Gaussian parameters. And then let's take a max of this one. And then actually uh, this uh, the, uh, equation can also uh, find, uh, the, be represented as a recursive form. To get this delta function, it is estimated, computed by the previous delta, uh, the probability function, and the likelihood, which we can compute uh, by using the, uh, the Gaussian uh, distributions and so on. So this one, similar to the uh, forward algorithm or backward algorithm, we first compute uh, this one, and by uh, the, uh, the following these equations, we can actually providing uh, this uh, delta value for each of the point. And let's uh, move this kind of recursive equations computation to the last. What happened? This actually becomes the state sequence highest probability state sequence. And this one, actually, we don't use any approximation. Again, previously, a greedy search algorithm is just kind of taking the, uh, the highest arc, uh, the highest score arc. It's a very rough approximation. And the second example, beam search, I also using the approximation, right? Uh, why we need approximation? Because this is uh, the, the, uh, the search problem of all, all possible state sequence. So it is exponential problem. However, beta B algorithm, uh, thanks to uh, the HMM property and the various kind of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the property, uh, we actually can get the exact uh, the highest state sequence by following this uh, the, the, the algorithm. Okay, so that is a kind of a beta B algorithm and I will have a short quiz, uh, please. So the question is among these three algorithm, which one providing the best score path, especially the case, uh, the especially this example, which one would provide the best uh, the, the, uh, score sequence? Thirty seconds uh, uh, more. Okay, close the poll. At this time, unfortunately, uh, the, some people actually confused. Uh, the answer is that beta B algorithm. There is no approximation and we can find the best score. 
Okay, so let's uh, the, the visualize the beta of the algorithm. Uh, again, I will use the a previous example. Uh, so uh, the, the, I kind of uh, the, uh, simplify uh, our beta of the algorithm equation because this part is a little bit complicated. So let's say, you know, we only have our, uh, the arc and the numbers here, right? And then uh, we try to have our kind of beta of the algorithm to uh, the compute this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the highest path. And in the beta of the algorithm, uh, the each point, uh, we compute a delta value like this. And then moving to the next. And then we also compute the uh, delta value for t equal three for each of the other uh, uh, state moving to the next timestamp and getting the, the continue the same kind of a computation. And then finally getting this uh, the uh, pass. And uh, let's check about the, the total score. So that it can be a little bit too small. Apologize for that. Um, but actually this one score is one, two, ten, two. So total score is actually, sorry, this is 15, yeah, not 18, 15. I will fix it, this one is 15. But anyway, we found the, the best score, right? Uh, the greedy uh, path we cannot reach, uh, the beam search we cannot reach, but the beta B, always we can get the best path. So if we can use a beta B algorithm, we should definitely take this one. And the computational cost is actually not combination, exponential, right? This is similar to the forward computation. Uh, it's just a linear for the time and also the HM state uh, and so on. And then each component, we actually compute the, uh, the Gaussian mixture uh, and so on. But still, uh, it is not uh, the, the exponential. So uh, this, uh, the, by using beta, we can get the best pass with a reasonable computation. Okay, so. Uh, this is a kind of beta B, uh, algorithm. And the beta B algorithm itself is usually using to check the alignment, most likely alignment in the HMM or even Gaussian mixture component and so on. But there is another application which is called beta B training. So this beta B training is actually widely used. And this is actually, some people also call it the beta B approximation. So uh, the, before the, uh, the, the, we introduced beta B algorithm, we are always fighting all possible state sequence, right? But the, the beta B algorithm, a uh, beta B training, uh, beta B approximation is actually, instead of consider the all possible state sequence and uh, summing up the all kind of a state sequence, we just selecting the most likely state sequence and then computing the trade. So forward backward algorithm was actually replaced by this beta B algorithm. And then the, uh, this, uh, the, the computation is actually uh, the smaller, a little bit smaller than the, the forward backward uh, algorithm. And we can actually compute the GD and the gamma uh, based on the similar manner. However, in the previous cases, it is soft, right? We actually compute some kind of other uh, possible values. So it can be uh, the, the, between zero and one. But now it's hard uh, the, the, the path we will take. So that the GZ, gamma, uh, and so on is actually based on the Kronecker delta function. 
apologize that it is a little bit confusing. This is, you know, I use the same uh, delta for the delta function and the Kronecker delta. But I thought that it is easier to understand. Kronecker delta should not be changed. And uh, the beta algorithm delta is also often used. So I hope you guys are not confused. Uh, but anyway, uh, by using the, this, uh, the Kronecker delta function, uh, we can actually uh, the compute this good E. So this Kronecker delta function is basically just uh, consider if we, uh, the, the, uh, the, if for example, the, uh, the beta of sequence is uh, the, uh, moving this way, and then the, the gamma contribution uh, is only considered in this kind of a path and they don't consider all the other ones. So this is actually uh, represented as the delta function. And the same for the gamma, uh, the uh, uh, gamma uh, the, the, uh, variables uh, and so on. And the, the question would be, yes. Yes. Say again. Yeah. Very good question. Very good question. Uh, my answer is that we don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason is because this actually value tend to be very picky in terms of probability. So actually the, uh, the Gaussian mixture cases, uh, the HMM state sequence is very picky and the highest path is almost one and the other is almost zero. So we could still consider all possible passes and the uh, forward backward is more accurate, but practically uh, this is very picky and uh, by replacing this one, approximating this one with a beta uh, the path actually doesn't degrade the performance so much in practical cases. So we even don't need uh, some kind of a adjustment and so on. So this beta training is actually quite widely used. For example, our uh, the, uh, the coding assignment too, we also encourage you to use the beta training because it is easier and also easy to debug. Actually, you know, every time we got that kind of best state sequence for each iteration. So it is easy to debug rather than, you know, consider the all possible state sequence, right? And practically, it doesn't have a so much big difference due to this reason and the lower computational cost. Uh, it's actually the computational cost is same as the forward computation, but we don't need a backward. So that actually the computational cost is actually lower than the, the forward backward algorithm. So this uh, the beta training is widely used in various uh, the, the speech recognition systems, uh, including the most famous speech recognition tool, Kaudi, that is also based on the, uh, this uh, beta training. And actually when uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, I was at the, the, uh, the NTT, uh, we also using beta training. And we actually compare the performance of the forward backward algorithm and the beta algorithm. And we didn't actually find a big difference. And the algorithm is simple. So we actually decided to use the beta training. And the, probably Cardi also has the same story. Okay, so uh, let's add uh, the uh, revisit uh, bar merge algorithm, but based on the beta training. So uh, this approach is replacing the forward backward algorithm here to the beta v algorithm, and then computing the uh, gamma good e and so on, and then we updating the uh, HMM and GMM parameter. So I usually also using the forward uh, the algorithm to compute the likelihood uh, because this providing the, uh, the, the accurate likelihood, and then we can also check the kind of convergence and so on. But anyway, uh, by using the beta training, we can simplify the uh, BAMH uh, algorithm. 
So that's the kind of uh, summary of uh, that's the kind of uh, today's uh, the, the lecture. So we are uh, using the uh, the today we extending the uh, HMM from single Gaussian to the Gaussian mixture model, and then providing the Gaussian mixture version of the Baumwert algorithm. I didn't fully providing the derivation this time, but the, as you can see that it's mostly we can solve it by just having an additional variable. And the other important algorithm is the beta D algorithm, which we can get the most likely sequence. And even this approximation is used for trading. 